Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome to this video, guys. My name is Giyakat Zaman. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. This is Mukhtasar al Quduri. We are going through the chapter of Buyu or the section of Buyu, and we have come to the last section of Tawli and Muraba. Although this topic is not to do with Tawli and Murabaha, it's just miscellaneous discussions. Uh, but this is that sec section. The next section, which we're going to do next time, inshallah, is going to be Riba. Right, so let's start then. First of all, let's... Words. So, ishtara, you know what that means. Yanquru, it means to move. Yeah, so, to move. Yuhawwal as well. Hawwala yuhawwalu, it means to move as well. So, they both kind of mean the same thing. Um, Lam yajuz lahu bayt. Bayt is bayt. Qabada yaqbidu, take possession. Aqar is property or estate. Yeah, so it's a state. قبل القبض in the Abi Hanifa to Abi Yusuf قال محمد يجوز اشترى مكيل you know مكيل is something that's uh, measured. Yeah, measured. موزون is weighed. وزن يزنو to okay so to weigh and مكيل is to measure. Measure موازنة is from the word to weigh. اكتالا is from the verb. Kala yakilu, right? So from bab ifti'al, kaf lam, kaf yalam, kaila. Okay, kaf lam, iktala ifta'ala yifta'ilu. Ittazanahu is actually from wazana, wazana. Okay, from bab ifti'al. Iw tazana, originally it was iw tazana, yaw tazinu. Then it becomes this. Check out my surf uh, series, Understanding Surf, if you want more clarification on this. Uh, ثم باعه مكايلة موازنة لم يجوز أكل يأكل to eat right, so this is straightforward as well حتى يعيد يعيد means to repeat yeah to do it a second time repeat كيل وزن تصرف it means investing to invest في الثمن ثمن is price قبض is possession um, يجوز بأي مشتري حتى يحط it means to Decrease. الثمن يتعلق it means to be attached. Okay, to attach استحقاق it means to deserve. Okay, or to be the rightful owner of something. بجميع it means all ثمن. Okay, حال حال with a شدة it means immediately, like we say cash now. Right, and أجله بثمن ثم أجل يؤجله. It means to defer. Ajalan ma'luman. Mu'ajjalan is from the word ajal. Either sahibu sara mu'ajjalan. Qard is a loan. And fa'inna ta'jiluhu la yasih. Okay. Right. So let's have a go at. Let's have a go at explaining this dinner. Some explaining to do. I hope that's big enough for you guys. Right, so, um, actually, oh, I'm supposed to do the Tarkib, aren't I? Yeah, Tarkib, just in case I forget. Let's do the Tarkib then. So, let's put this here. Tarkib time. This is what happens, I can make the writing disappear. So, man ishtara, ishtara is fi'l. Shay'an is the maful bihi. Mimma yunqal, this is majhul, okay. Yunqalu. Yuhawalu Lam yajuz Lahu bay'uhu fa'il Hatta yaqbidahu This is the unhidden un Okay, so un is hidden Wa yajuzu fi'il Bay'u Al-aqari mudaf mudaf ilay Qabla al-qabdi Inda abi hanifata Wa abi yusufa Wa qala muhammadun لا يجوز من اشترى مكيلا مكايلة so مكيلا is the مفعول به and then مكايلة حال this could be حال اشترى مكيلا مكايلة oh no actually make it تمييز تمييز بقى what do you guys think let me know أو موزونا موازنة again this is تمييز let's put a T there for تمييز فاكتاله أو اتزنه اكتاله is the فعل so it's 
So it doesn't is the fail. ثم باعه مكايلة Again, this is تمييز أو موازنة لم يجوز للمشتري منه أن So أن يبيعه is the فائل of يجوز okay. So that goes back to there ولا أن يأكله حتى يعيد الكيلة So عاد يعيد إعادة والوزن Okay, and then full stop والتصرف في الثمن قبل القبض جائز ويجوز للمشتري أن يزيد البائئ آه. بائع مفعول به في الثمن ويجوز للبايع أن يزيد في المبيع ويجوز أن يحط من الثمن ويتعلق الاستحقاق بجميع ذلك ومن باع بثمن حال ثم أجله أجلا معلوما صار مؤجلا This is the خبر of صار وكل new sentence كل دين مبتدا حال This is شدق حل يحل إذا أجله Let's bring this writing up Oops Wrote a bit too much صاحبه صاحبه صار مؤجلا is the خبر إلا ال uh, so okay what would you guys say this is كل دين إذا أجل صاحب صار مؤجلا إلا القرض أو قرض what do you guys think you let me know what you guys think فإن نتأجيله لا يصح okay let's have a go at this Right, so what's the masla here? So the masla basically over here is talking about this issue of um, are you allowed to sell something which you have purchased? Yes, you can. Yeah, you can sell anything you want you purchased. But here is the catch. Let's say, for example, there is this guy. Yeah, this guy has purchased a laptop from this guy. Okay, so seller, buyer, okay, deal done, alhamdulillah. He buys this, he gives the cash over to him, end of story, done. Now what this guy wants to do is this guy wants to now sell it on to another guy now. He wants to sell it on to, let's call this guy, uh, Mr. X. So he's going to sell it to Mr. X. Mr. X's legs a bit bent there because he was running. So now, can he sell it to him? So we say yes. So long as he has, B has taken possession of this. So B in this case, as long as he has taken possession, then it is fine, right? So the idea basically is, is possession is key. Yeah, so we call this Qabd. Qabd. Okay, so Qabd is necessary. Why is Qabd necessary? Qabd is necessary so that you can guarantee responsibility. So it's like Qabd is equal to Responsible. Now, this is a very important concept to understand when you're studying bait. If you understand this, a lot of things in transactions are going to make sense. First of all, understand this, then I'll explain. So everyone understand this? So if B was to buy from S, right, the seller, laptop, if he takes possession of it, he's allowed to sell it onto X. But if he does not take possession of it, so let's say, for instance, let's change the color of this. So for instance, let's say, B has not taken possession. Uh, he bought it off S and then he was going to collect it. But then let's say X said to him, oh, have you bought a laptop? And he says, yeah, I haven't got it yet. It's at the it's at the shop. You want it? He goes, yeah, I'll buy it off you. He goes, okay, I'll buy it. So he goes and sells it to X. That is not allowed. He's selling something before taking possession. This is something that has been banned in hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said that whoever buys food should not sell it on until they've weighed it themselves. And the idea is that qabad has to take place. Right? So possession is crucial. Possession is crucial for uh, anyone to sell it on. Now this is where people have this question in today's times, which is in regards to drop shipping. So if, I don't know if you guys know about drop shipping. Drop shipping basically, let's say for example, there's this guy, and he is at home, and he's got a uh, a computer, and basically what he does, this is a computer on on legs. All right, it's supposed to be a desk. So what he does, he doesn't own anything. So there is this company. Yeah, let's call this 
the LZ company. LZ company, they sell all sorts of goods, right? So this sells goods. So LZ company now, obviously, this guy has customers. Now, these customers, they want to buy the goods. Yeah, they want to buy goods from there. But this guy in the middle, what he does, he decides to become like a middleman. And he, he puts on his website that he's selling goods. They contact him. He says, okay, I'll sell it to you. But he doesn't own it though. Who owns it? These guys own it. Right? So these are the guys that own it. So what happens is those guys, what he does, he buys it off them and then he gets their addresses and he sends it directly to them. Now this is called dropshipping. Or one, this is the kind of main scenario of dropshipping. Right? So you're basically on nothing. And then what you do is you sell stuff that you don't own to people on a website um, and they just get it sent to their house. Now, is this allowed? So here the problem, the main problem here is covered, taking possession. That's where the main thing. Now, is it allowed in today's times? Is it not? That's a separate issue. You guys can ask me that on my live streams and I'll explain it. But because I want to focus purely on the kitab, I don't want to bring external things and explain sort of like contemporary issues here. I just want to mention it as brief as possible so you guys can benefit from this. Does that make sense? So this is why drop shipping. Yeah, so drop shipping is an issue here. Anyway, Manishtara, whoever purchases this guy, Shayan, something, which is a laptop. Mimma yunqalu wa yuhawwalu, something that can be moved from one place to another. Yuhawwal means transferred. Lam yajuz lahu bay'uhu hatta yaqbidahu. This guy is not allowed to go and further sell it on until he takes qabd, possession of it. Okay, so what's the reason for this? The scholars say the reason for this is because the possibility of the item getting damaged before it gets to X. Right, so X is going to end up if a thousand people done this, you know, it's not going to really turn out good. Uh, so, however, you are allowed to sell estate qabl al qabdi according to Imam Hanif and Abu Yusuf. So, Imam Hanif and Abu Yusuf say, but let's say, for example, B was buying let's just move this up here okay let's say B was actually buying a property a house right so a house is fixed it's not gonna it's not really gonna move about right so this is a house and he's gonna buy the house right so instead of taking possession he goes and sells it directly off to X so B has bought the house given the money and then he sells it directly off to uh, X over here. So Imam Hanifa and Imam Yusuf, they say it's Jais. Why is it Jais for? Because they say basically that the chances of the house getting des destroyed before it gets to X is very, very unlikely. It's extremely unlikely, like unless some crazy freak storm or earthquake happens. Does that make sense? So see, they do allow this, but it's under conditions. So... Selling something you don't possess is allowed as long as you can guarantee the item will get to the get to the person before you before they've and won't get destroyed before they get it. So that's the difference between the two. Imam Muhammad Rahimullah on the other hand, however, he disagrees with this. Qala Muhammadun, Imam Muhammad, he says, he says, no, la yajuzu, it is not permissible. Right? He says no. So this view, therefore, is only the view of Abu Hanifa and Abu Yusuf. Yeah, Imam Muhammad, he says, no, Qabad is necessary in all situations. You are not allowed to sell anything unless you take Qabad for it. Now, this is the Hanafi Madhab. Outside of the Hanafi Madhab, um, if you guys are interested and you want to read more, I would definitely suggest you read Mufti Taki Usmani's book, Fikul Buyu. So in Fikul Buyu, he does mention some scenarios regarding like these big companies that sell things before they take possession. Um, like, you know, they could be like a country. And this country is going to sell, send something to this country. Let's call this country A. This country is called B. So this country is going to send, send goods to the, a guy in this country. All right. So there's a guy in this country. He's going to buy this stuff. But the problem is he doesn't get it. Yeah. So what, what happens usually is this. When this guy over here, he actually buys something. This is similar to drop shipping, basically. So what he does is as it's coming over here, he sells it to another guy. And then over here, as it's going, it gets sold to another guy. Right? No one's got hold of it yet. And by the time it gets over here, it's sold to another guy. Yeah. And by the time it gets over here, it's sold to another guy. Yeah. So that it switches hands before taking possession. 
And a lot of this happens. So he looks into other madhahib, what other madhahib say. Right, so see, I don't want to go too much into this kind of masail because I know it's going to cause a lot of confusion. I want to stick to Quduri, guys. Let me stick to Quduri. What do you say? Do you guys like me dipping into other masail and talking about contemporary things? Or do you think I should just stick to the text? You let me know in the comments, guys. Because I trust you guys. Okay, next masla now. This masla is to do with selling something in a specific manner. Remember last week I told you guys about um, murabah and tolia. Murabah and tolia are specific contracts, okay? You probably will 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 hardly see in your life people doing murabah and tolia because it's very, very like niche. Um, you know, it's not something that everyone does. When you go to the shop, even if you tell how much you bought it for, that's not necessarily murabah and tolia, okay? So the, the transaction that we do today do not fall under murabah and tolia just before so, someone asks. Okay, so let's say, for example, there's a guy. Let's say it's a lady this time. All right, so two ladies. And they want to buy and sell. Are they allowed to buy and sell? Of course they're allowed to buy and sell. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, this lady, she is selling rice. Yeah, this is it. It's supposed to be a heap of rice, okay? That's a rice, that is. It looks a bit crazy, you know, crazy rice. This is. Let's call this crazy rice. So she's selling crazy rice, rice to this lady. And when she goes and sells the rice to this lady, she's obviously going to give her cash for it or money or, you know, pay by card, whatever. She's giving the money for it. Is that allowed? Of course it's allowed. She is the buyer. She is the seller. Totally allowed. Now, if you buy rice, there's two ways you can buy rice. You can either buy rice packaged. Yeah, so you either buy it uh, pre-packaged. So pre-pack. Or you can buy it in uh, scoops yeah, or weight, whichever one you know you want to buy in, right? Nowadays you go to the shop, you just buy a bag of rice, you don't weigh it, you don't measure it, anything. Now this muscle is talking about the scoop and weighing one. So if you buy rice by scoops, or you buy, let's say for example, she buys, she wants to buy twenty-five scoops of rice, scoops, or kg of rice, she wants to buy twenty-five, right? So now, if she buys it, she has to measure it again. If it was not measured in front of her. So let's say this lady, so in her own house, she 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 went inside and she, she done it over there. If she done it over there where no one can see, right, over here, then B has to go and repeat, repeat it again. But if she didn't, Go and do it. She did it right in front of her. Like she did it over there. Then no need. There's no need for repeating. Does that make sense? Because it's done in front of her. The point of repeating the the weighing and the measuring is just so that if B goes and sells it on to another person, like let's call this lady Mrs. X. She sells it to Mrs. X. Over there, Mrs. X won't get conned. Like she won't get ripped off. Because she, B thinks she's bought 25. She sells it on to X thinking X thinks it's 25. And it turns out to be 24 or 23. Then X has got ripped off there, right? Does that make sense? Okay, let's have a look at this then. So, man ishtara, whoever purchases makilan, something that's measured, by way of measuring. So, B buys rice by way of measuring 25. O mozunan, or something that's weighed muazanatan, from through something that's weighed through weighing. Remember, if you buy pre-packed, then this masala doesn't apply to you. Just go to sleep, guys. Faktalahu, so B goes and measure, uh, or S goes and measures it. O it doesn't know who, and then B S goes and weighs it. Thumma ba'ahu mukayalatan, yeah, and then uh, B goes and she sells it on to someone else. Mua mukayalatan or muazanatan lam yajuz lil mushtari minhu an yabi'ahu. So the person, now this says the mushtari minhu, the person who who sells it from them, right? So in that case, this would be X, right? So X, if X goes and wants to go and sell it to someone else, um, if B knows exactly how much is in it, right? Then she can sell it to X. But if B doesn't, has, X hasn't tested it herself, she hasn't weighed it or measured it herself, X is not allowed to go and sell it to Y, Mrs. Y. Yeah, she cannot go and sell it to Mrs. Y until the measuring has been done. Once the measuring has been done, then she's allowed to go and sell it. That's what I say. Right, and I remember I told you two scenarios. If S was to measure it inside behind closed doors, 
then B would have to measure it to set it to X. But if S measured it in front of B, okay, then B is allowed to sell it, but X can't sell it until she goes and measures it for Y. And then if Y wants to go and sell it and so forth. Does that make sense? So, Lam yajuz, it's not jayz, lil mushtari minhu, for the mushtari from her. So if she is, B is the first mushtari, X is the second mushtari. An yabi'ahu, so X cannot sell it on. Wala an yakulahu, she's not even allowed to eat it, consume it as well. Hatta yu'ida, until X repeats the kail wal wazan. Alright, so, does everyone understand that? I know it's it's a bit, I think I'm probably complicated it a bit. Uh, but that's basically the scenario over here. Okay, play it again. Watch it again, go over it again, inshallah, it'll make sense. The idea is, as long as B knows how much is in there, she's seen it herself, she can go and sell it on to the next person. If she doesn't know how much is in there, she's not allowed to go to sell it on to the other person. Likewise, X is not allowed to go and sell it on to Y until she has weighed it and measured it herself, and so forth. Okay, that's the next masala. Now, let's go to another masala. All right, so let's say, for example, this is two people over here. Okay, so we'll have a man and let's have a woman. Uh, she is selling a, I don't know, let's say a laptop. All of them are selling laptops. It's a laptop craze. So she's selling a laptop, right? So she's sold the laptop to him. And she is obviously um, going to get the the money. But let's say, if, if this happens, let's say she doesn't get the money. The money is going to be given to her later, right? So this money will be given to her after three days. Yeah, so let's say, for example, that's how the three days are. So zero, uh, not zero, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So the deal was done on Monday, and she's supposed to get the money on Thursday. So in this period in the middle, interim period, can the seller, sell over here, this is the buyer, right? Can the seller over here go and buy something else so let's say for example she wants to buy from i don't know someone else a um a chair yeah she wants to buy a chair from someone but she doesn't have the money yet so on on, on let's say on on tuesday she decides to buy the chair from this guy the gentleman and uh, he said where's the money she says oh i'm gonna get the money on thursday can i pay you that so is she allowed to is s allowed to spend the money before she's even got it so a deal's done Money is expected by Thursday. Can S go and assume that she's got the money and start buying and selling stuff, or buying stuff with it? Yes, she can. Yeah. So what the sarrufu fi thamani qabl al qabdi jaizun. Yeah. So dealing with the thaman before taking possession of it is jaiz. Now this is different from the top case, isn't it? The the rice one, the rice one, uh, or even normal things. You can't sell it on until you've taken possession of it, until you've got it. But in cash is flexibility in cash. Cash you're allowed to, because remember we said, in one of the lessons we said, cash is غير متعين, it's something that's non-specified, right, by the Sharia. Does that make sense? So in goods, you can't sell them on before you take them possession. Like if I've ordered a, a mobile phone and it's coming to my house in two days' time, before that two days, I can't sell it to someone else. But if I'm owed cash, I can deal with that cash. Okay, next masala. Now, let's say, for example, there is a buyer and there is a seller. So let's do it over here. I think we have some nice space over here. Some nice juicy space. Right. Do you guys like these masail? Or is it like, oh, it's going over my head. When I, when I studied Quduri, I first time found it very hard. Because first of all, I was it was in Arabic. And it was in my second year. We were studying Quduri in year two. We studied it. And it was like really difficult to understand because it was very new concepts I wasn't used to um, but slowly alhamdulillah I began to read a lot I began to ask people and started to alhamdulillah Allah, Allah help me understand okay so let's say for example now there is this guy this is the buyer so let's call him buyer and this is the seller and this the seller has agreed to sell uh, times 10 apples it's supposed to be apple okay I know you're gonna to say to me, oh, that doesn't look like an apple, that looks like some, I don't know, something else, a cherry, a big cherry. Yeah, but anyway, that's an apple, yeah? 10 apples to him for one pound. Yeah, one pound for 10 apples, very cheap. Yeah, it's a nice season. He gives him the money, he gives him the goods, deal done, yeah? But can the seller, can the seller add something extra? Can the seller say, you know what? 
I'll throw in an extra one. You know, you just have it for free. So he gives him an extra one free. Is that allowed? Yes, you can add extra one. And can the buyer say, you know what? I'll give you one pound, 10 pence. I'll give you 10 pence free. Okay, so 10 pence free. Is he allowed to do that? Yes, he's allowed. So basically, once the deal is done, the buyer or seller can add extra stuff for the other person. That's allowed. Um, so he says, وَيَجُوزُ is جَائِزْ لِلْمُشْتَرِي for the mushtari, in this case, the buyer. And يَزِيدَ الْبَائِعَ فِي الثَّمَنِ to add extra into the price. وَيَجُوزُ لِلْبَائِعَ and the seller can also add extra. And يَزِيدَ فِي الْمَبِيعَ so he's added extra one here. Okay. Now, can the seller reduce the price? Can the seller say, you know what? You're a good guy. You're a regular customer. You know what? Minus 10. Can he minus 10? Yes, he can. Um, okay, so يَجُوزُ and يَحُطَّ is permissible for the seller. In this case, it's the seller. يَحُطَّ for him to reduce the thumb as well. Now, the question here is this now. Let's say they decide to do iqala. Remember, we used to talk about iqala. Abolition, right? So nullification of the contract. If they decide to abolish the contract, dissolve the contract, uh, and, and, and return the goods, how much are they going to return? So if the buyer received 10 plus 1, is he going to give back 11 or is he going to give back just 10? Does that make sense? Because remember, he purchased ijab and qabulus for 10. And if the seller has given has given him a, re, a, a discount of 90, although the deal was on one pound, is he going to give back one pound or is he going to give back 90? So does everyone understand what's happening over here? The idea basically is, is how much is going to be given back. So he says, وَيَتَعَلَّقُ الْإِسْتِحْقَاقِ So إِسْتِحْقَاقِ meaning that if it's deserved, بِجَمِيءِ ذَلِكَ All of that. So if istiqaq, what is istiqaq? So istiqaq can have several scenarios. One istiqaq is I've showed you here. They want to nullify the contract. Okay, so nullification of the contract, you know, what happens, how much they give back. The other scenario istiqaq is this. Let's say there is an, a third person comes along. And the third person says, you know, those apples are mine. Those apples are mine. S sold them without my permission and he's angry. Right, and he proves it and the judge says, right, they're, they're his. You are not allowed to sell them, uh, so give everything back now. So when this guy obviously gets all the apples, right? Um, what's going to happen? The buyer has lost out, isn't he? So how much is the buyer going to get back? Is he going to get one pound back or ninety pence? Exactly the same thing, but this guy is called the mustahik. This guy they call him the mustahik, the third person. Third person looks like a smiley face with a guy with two eyes and a strange ear, yeah, with a mouth and a no beard. So يتعلق الاستقاق بجميع ذلك استقاق is going to be attached to all of that every single aspect of it بجميع. Does that make sense? Meaning if you buy and sell something from someone and you've done it at a fixed price and you've done it with fixed goods which you're supposed to do then later on you decide to give 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 more or take less um, when it comes to nullifying the contract or when it comes to someone else claiming that it was theirs what happens? Do you get back everything that was in the contract? Or do you get back everything that was added on extra? Okay, um, now next. Next muscle is this. Let's say, for example, there is a person. And this person was to, let's say, sell something. Uh, and they decided that they were going to sell the item and get normal, you know, on the spot sale. All right, so this is buyer. This is seller. Right, so buyer buys from the seller and he buys, again, guess what guys, laptop. Right, so the money is supposed to be given up front. This is called hal, they call this cash, cash in hand. Yeah, so it's supposed to give it hal immediately. Now the deal is done, he's supposed to give the money, right? Let's say the deal was done at 10 a.m. Then at, at 10 uh, 05, the buyer says, oh, you know what, I'm sorry, but is it okay if I give you the money tomorrow? So he wants a deferred payment. He wants to defer the payment. Can he? Can I defer the payment? You're allowed to do that. Yeah. So, man ba'a, whoever sells something, bithamanin halin, for immediate cash, right? So payment, straight payment. Thumma ajalahu ajalan ma'luman. And then he defers it to a, to a later date. Right? So, so 
originally supposed to be given at 10 a.m. But he did, at 10 or 5, he defers it for another day. Sara mu'ajjal, and the contract will now become deferred. Meaning the seller cannot ask for the money before that particular date that he's promised. So basically what this means, if you didn't set a date for giving the money in the contract and mutually both sides, they agree for a date to be set. That date can be set and it becomes binding on them. Okay. Um, okay. Then he says, what about, does this apply to all debts? He goes, yes. Kullu in all debts that are, are supposed to be given straight away. Like let's say someone owes you money, they bought something off you. That's called a debt. In Arabic, we call this a debt. All right, so something which you're owed, money that you're owed immediately. You're allowed to defer it. Yeah, so sahibuhu, the person who has the right, sahib means the person who has the right, has the right to defer it. Sara mu'ajjalan, it will become mu'ajjal. Yeah, so sara mu'ajjalan, all debts. You know, let's say for example, you know, you're supposed to give the money in six months' time. Six months' time comes, you're supposed to give the money, and they say, can I have an extra month? Yes, because the Qur'an encourages this. فَنَضِرَةٌ إِلَى مَيْسَرَ The Qur'an says that if someone comes to you and asks for a deferred payment, then defer the payment. It's good. It's rewarding. The only thing you can't defer in payment, the Hanafi say, is qard. إِلَّا الْقَرْضِ Qard is a loan. If you borrowed money of someone, on the other hand, even if you stipulated a date, so loan, so let's say, for example, there is a uh, you know, January and July. Yeah, you've said to the person, look, you know what? You can give me the money in July. July is fine. You can actually ask for it straight away. So legally, that is not binding. That date in loans is not binding, right? So non-binding. So loans date are not binding, but, but debt dates are binding. See the difference? So a debt is something which is in... In, in exchange for something else. A loan is just a a, a, a unilateral, um, you know, goodwill gesture. So I borrow you some money. I say to you, give me back next week. I can actually ask for that money tomorrow. It's fine. So illa al-qard, except for qard. Yeah, so loans can cannot be deferred legally. You can defer them, but you can ask for them straight away. فَإِنَّ تَأْجِيلَهُ Because def it's deferment, لَا يَسِحْ is not valid. Meaning, in the courts, they won't recognize it. Courts will not recognize deferred loans. Right? They'll just say, look, we can't make it binding. We can only make debts binding. Does that make sense? Okay, excellent, excellent. These are some nice juicy mas masala. That I've, again, I've gone a bit over time. It's just that, you know what? I like explaining these things to you guys so you understand it crystal clear. Right? Crystal clear. And if you guys have understood this crystal clear, clear, hit, hit the like button, subscribe button, and also show some love and put a nice comment. Okay, so questions for you guys now. So first question, man ishtara. So are you allowed to sell something that you bought before taking possession? Yes or no? You bought a phone. It hasn't reached your house yet. Your next door neighbor wants to buy that phone off you. Are you allowed to sell it to them before you get it? No, you can't. Okay, what if you have taken possession? Can you sell it? Yes, you can. What about houses, property? Does it work in the same way? If you buy a house, let's say in Australia, and you're in the UK, can you go and sell it onto someone else even if you haven't taken possession? So Abu Hanif and Abu Yusuf say, yes, you can. Mama Muhammad says, no, you can't. Okay. Um, are you allowed to sell on something that you bought that's weighed and measured? So you bought rice that's weighed or measured and you didn't see it weighed and measured, but you go and want to sell it onto your next door neighbor. Can you do that before weighing and measure it? No, you can't. You must weigh it and measure it or at least have it seen, have seen it done in the shop. Then you can sell it on to the other person. This is because the Prophet forbade this and even eating from it as well. Uh, okay, uh, what about if a person once has bought something, has sold something rather, is owed money, can they go and assume they've got that money and buy stuff with it? So yes, you can. Um, but you can't do that with goods. So you can do it with cash, you know, money you can't do it with fixed goods. Okay, can the buyer and seller add or subtract things from the contract after the deal's done, yes, at a goodwill gesture, they can do it. However, if an istiqaq takes place, a third person comes in and says it's theirs, then they will return everything that was added onto the contract or deducted from it. Right, so you look at the post. Uh, okay, if someone has made a deal with someone and they're supposed to give the cash immediately, and they decide later on that they would like to defer it, 
Is that possible? Yes, as long as it's bilateral, it's permissible to defer uh, these deals. And what about loans? Can you do it with loans? No, you can't do with loans. Khalas. Jazakumullah khair, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. Thank you to all my patrons for supporting my channel. May Allah give you immense barakah in your time and your wealth and your health. You know, this is the deen of Allah. We all try to strive to support Allah deen in whatever way we can. And this is the way that I, I, I want to do it. And you guys supporting me and doing this makes me so happy. Alhamdulillah. And if anyone else wants to become patron or even support my channel in any way possible, please reach out to me. You can check out the description below. And I will see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.